Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Hattie Homemaking. So the news is out, my big exciting secret that I couldn't wait to tell you I can finally be open about. So I am pregnant and it's so exciting to be able to finally say that confidently. I'm about f 15 weeks um, and a couple of days. So yes, out of the first trimester now, which is great. Um, I'm just so excited to be able to talk about it finally. It's been such an exciting time in my life if you follow this channel for any amount of time you will know that my lifelong dream has been to be a mum and it's been something I've been excited about my whole entire life we were talking about it the other day and when I was growing up the types of toys I used to have and I had every baby under the sun it was baby Annabelle baby born baby pee pee <laughs> So I think from a young age I've been excited about all aspects of parenthood, even baby pee pee. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just finally, I'm so excited to finally be literally living my dream. It feels so surreal. It's one of the most amazing, surreal, emotion filled couple of weeks I've ever had the moment I found out was like nothing I've ever experienced before like the emotion was like the most hard-hitting thing ever so I'll give you a little bit of the story about how I found out I want this video just to be a bit of a catch-up really um so I want to talk about how I found out um I want to talk a little bit about my first trimester symptoms, how I've been feeling and um, also talk about the early scan and um, different scans we've had up till now. So I just want to update you on everything and then also a little bit about my future plans on this channel. Um, so yeah, let's just get on into it. So um, the morning I found out was actually, you couldn't write it, it's literally like a fairy tale. It was the morning of our first anniversary. So we we had booked to go to an Airbnb so we were going to go to the Airbnb and it had a hot tub, a fire pit, it was in this beautiful countryside setting with horses, literally like my dream location but because it had a hot tub and because I'm a freak that's obsessed with pregnancy and having children I just know random facts so I've always known that you shouldn't go in hot tubs, saunas, steam rooms or like really hot baths if you're pregnant and I just had that in the back of my mind so I just said to Paul like I half don't want to do a test because I don't think it's going to be positive and I don't want our anniversary to start out on like disappointment if that makes sense but at the same time I just had this little niggle in the back of my mind thinking if I went went in the hot tub forever for however long I wanted and then found out I was pregnant afterwards I know with me being a little perfectionist I would be so anxious about it thinking that I could have ruined something or hurt the baby somehow so I decided I was just going to do a test and move on quickly and it was going to be a lovely day no matter what so I decided to do the test so yeah so I did the test <laughs> wasn't expecting anything I remember vividly and I will always remember this I was scrolling on Twitter I have an anonymous Twitter account I never post anything but I do go on there just to catch up on the latest goss what's going on in the world and at the time it was the time where Holly and Phil two presenters in the UK had skipped the queue to um, pay their respects to the Queen so I was sat there while my test was loading away just scrolling reading about this 
genuinely just trying to distract myself because I wasn't expecting it to be positive and I didn't want to get my hopes up and get all adrenaline-y and hopeful I just kind of wanted to do it just to almost check a box that I'd done it and then I could go in the hot tub so I put my phone to the side and I went to pick it up and just throw it in the bin and when I saw that second line it was it was very very faint um but there was a line there (laughs) There well we know now there was definitely a line there so my eyes were like adjusting to it for a while I'd say about 30 seconds I was stood there no tears just stood there like an utter like disbelief shock um just not believing it was true not believing it actually happened um you hear so many stories of false positives so I was just staring at it next minute the emotion just hit me like a tidal wave it was like it's like so hard to describe and I just knew I was I just knew it wasn't wrong and I had this huge thing planned not huge thing just a normal little thing planned of how I was going to tell Paul I was pregnant so I bought this little baby grow that said hello daddy and I was going to lay it out with some little booties I'd bought a little hat and the positive pregnancy tests so that's how I had planned to tell him well let me tell you in the moment it just didn't go like that I was so overwhelmed with emotion and me and Paul really like have always worked through stuff together we've never we go through things together like even if we get like a really exciting gift for each other we find it very very difficult to hold back for a little bit so he was in the bedroom he was right there behind (laughs) fast asleep face first and I just ran into the room screaming there's a line there's a line there's a line there's a line crying my eyes out he was in such a deep sleep he like shut up thinking there was something seriously wrong that had happened all he saw was me frantic and crying so so he thought something bad had happened and then it slowly dawned on him what had happened he looked at the test and then I think he was the exact same as me just like complete disbelief um just yeah just he he just didn't know what to think so we both went back into the bathroom and started doing more tests um and got more positives we actually had a digital that said not pregnant but if that happens to you apparently well I actually did the test wrong I didn't dip it in for long enough so that could be one reason um I think just with all the emotion of everything I was just like oh (laughs) um but then also it takes more of the hcg hormone to activate the digital one so if that happens to you don't panic so we then went away to our airbnb i took these pregnancy sticks with me literally all day i'll insert a picture i was just holding them all day i was holding them by the fire pit and that day was just incredible we saw the horses met some little goats and we sat having a barbecue it was genuinely the best day of my life i know i've had a wedding day and that should have been but it was it was just the happiest most unexpected day you could ever wish for it was absolutely incredible it was absolutely amazing um so yeah but I was still in the back of my mind hoping that it was but I was still a little bit reluctant to like fully I don't know fully embrace I was embracing it but I think part of me in the back of my mind was a little bit worried still so I wanted to do more tests so I did a load more tests throughout the weeks finally got my digital that said pregnant I think that's the moment that I was like right okay this can't be wrong so I got addicted to testing I was I loved seeing those double lines like literally I think I was testing until I was about six weeks six or seven weeks something like that because I just needed that reassurance so because I was like that and found it very difficult to believe when you've wanted something in your whole life like how can you just trust a stick with dye on (laughs) it's like really really difficult so we booked an early scan reassurance um test with a private clinic so in the UK um once you find out you're pregnant you have to wait until you're 12 weeks pregnant to be able to go for a scan on the NHS and that is a long time to wait if you're like me I'm very anxious and kind of just want to know so (laughs) we booked this private scan and I'm so glad we did I was so nervous going in there um you hear all these stories about miscarriages um 
all different things that can go wrong. So I was so nervous. I was actually bright red and shaking. So the lady was lovely. She um, knew I was very nervous. So she didn't turn the screen on while she was looking. I think that's just standard procedure. But for that minute while she was looking, I was staring at her face trying to like dissect every movement her face was doing, whether it was good, whether it was bad. And Paul was squeezing my hand, bless him, and he was like rubbing my head. I think he was trying to be um, supportive, but because he was nervous himself, the rub was literally like this. <laughs> it was like he was trying to make my hair static. <laughs> so I was feeling his nerves as well we were both nervous and then the lady just said you have one healthy baby in there she turned the screen on and that's when we saw the little tiny embryo with the heartbeat oh that was so so emotional I felt myself go even hotter I had tears in my eyes and it made us laugh as well how she emphasized the one because twins was something we were a little bit nervous about because obviously as first time parents that's a little bit scary and we live in a very small house <laughs> so we were a little bit relieved it wasn't twins but just absolutely over the moon it just felt so surreal and I think that's the moment that made it all real in our minds so then after that scan we went back and told some very close family members. I was only seven weeks at the time, so still very early to be shouting it from the rooftops, but I think I was just so excited. I just had to tell, I had to tell someone. So we told a couple of close um, friends and family members, and that was such an amazing day as well, just first getting that scan and then going back and being able to tell people. Everyone we have told has been just over the moon for us I think because I have been very open with everyone my whole life about how much I want children it's been no secret how much I want children so I think as soon as we got married everyone was like waiting for it and just knew how much I wanted it so I think they were just so happy for me that I was living this dream and Paul has fully embraced it as well he's so excited as well we talk about it so much we sound like broken records <laughs> trying to dissect whether we think it's a boy or a girl we talk about that a lot we talk about like things we can imagine clothes we walk into what will be the nursery constantly I've already started collecting loads of stuff so we went to a secondhand baby sale and I got loads of stuff from there. And then anything I see secondhand that's in good nick, I just have to buy it. Because I just think things are used for such a short amount of time with babies that it really is worth looking secondhand. So I'm only now 15, well, coming up to 16 weeks now. And I've got so much stuff. But was I ever going to be any other way? So we actually find out the gender on Christmas Eve which is super super exciting so we're going to go for another private scan and um, get them to fill up like a little balloon for us and then it's just going to be us and very close family members I didn't want a huge big gender reveal just because I didn't want to have to not worry about other people's emotions but I'm a very like um what's the word I think it's like empathetic you know when you soak up the emotions of other people so I didn't want too many people around that I was going to have to think about if they're all right and I don't know, I just wanted it to be a very, very close family occasion, very intimate and natural. I didn't want to feel like I was acting or putting on a show or a party for anyone. So I'm so excited for that. That's going to happen on Christmas Eve. Um, so that's really exciting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my first trimester symptoms now. So at first, genuinely, I don't think I had any symptoms, nothing obvious. And I think because of that, that was half the reason that I was finding it very difficult to come to the terms, to come to terms with the fact that I was actually pregnant and found it, um, found out I was very nervous about it. And I think as soon as the symptoms hit, then you're like, you hate having the symptoms but then before you get them you kind of want them for reassurance so I would say I was um, very low symptoms for a while I actually got COVID when I was five weeks pregnant and I can't tell you how poorly I was it was like next level I had it before last Christmas and it wasn't that bad but this time I think because I was pregnant and your immune system isn't as good I was so 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 poorly like I can't even describe to you how poorly I was and then a couple of weeks after I then got a cold so I think maybe that might have like blocked some of the symptoms or that was all I could think about 
we then went to Rome for Paul's 30th birthday we already had that planned um, before I knew I was pregnant so I was actually eight weeks <laughs> when we went to Rome which is when your symptoms kind of hit like that's the stage where they really start kicking in and if you'll know if you've ever been to Rome there is a lot of walking involved so I was absolutely exhausted but I loved it it's gonna always be such a special memory Paul's 30th birthday I've just found out I was pregnant we were in Rome and yeah it's always just going to be such a special memory to have so yeah so we went to Rome um and then the last two days we were there that's when my sickness really kicked in um I have not had it that bad but that's just when it started so now whenever I think of Rome or I think of like fresh pasta it really makes me feel sick and I think it's just of the associations I hope that's going to go because I love Italian food um but as well because when you're in Italy and you walk in around the streets a lot of people eat outside so it was absolutely everywhere <laughs> but it was it was lovely um so the last two days my sickness really kicked in I've had friends that have had sickness that has genuinely been like a stomach bug every day throwing up all day and that is what I pictured it to be like so I think that's what I was expecting the reality for me has been like a low level nausea constantly um which gets better when I eat but it's not something that has ruined my days there have been mornings where I have physically thrown up <laughs> delightful but I think because I'm not scared of being sick this is the other thing I think it depends how much like mental emphasis you put on it I'm personally not scared of being sick so I will kind of just get it over with and then get on with my day but I think for people that are scared of it they'll then get themselves really worked up and then just feel drained afterwards so for me I was lucky that I was just able to continue living and being happy even though I had these symptoms so that was one thing. The other thing is brain fog as well. I feel like my mind thinks one th one thing and my mouth just comes out with something completely different and I'm like, hang on a minute, how did we get here? <laughs> so that has been a challenge. I have struggled with brain fog anyway. I'm a very tired person just naturally I'm a very low energy person but a couple of years ago I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome so that on top of being pregnant has meant that a lot of lazy days have been in order you might have noticed I'm in my dressing gown now that was kind of because I'm having a lazy day but also it was all frosty this morning and it's just so cold so I'm all snuggled up I've got all my nice lights on got my heating on and yes it's just a nice cozy day <laughs> so yeah brain fog sickness thirst oh my goodness gracious me I can't stop drinking water I have spoke to my midwife about it because it can be a sign of gestational diabetes and she's done the test and I don't have it it's just a symptom that I think a lot of people do get um I wouldn't say it in the early days you know people talk about the two week wait symptoms as well I didn't I just didn't notice anything if I'm honest the I had one night this might be a bit TMI where I just felt like I had trapped wind but that could have been a symptom or that could have just been something normal I don't know <laughs> so yeah so that they have been my main symptoms and yeah so recently as well when I was 13 weeks we went for our NHS scan um so it was one week later than what it should have been um it did get moved because my cycles were long it was going to be too early so I had to call them and reschedule which actually worked out really well because I was 13 weeks they said there was so much more detail and I love our scan picture I just look at it all the time and I feel so much more bonded to the baby now because I've seen it like it's crazy to me how from seven weeks when I went to the early scan to 13 weeks when I went to my NHS one how quickly it changes and I just think the human body is the most amazing thing and I think up until the point you get pregnant you see your body for what it looks like and then suddenly you're just amazed of what it can do so I am hoping that that's going to be something that really um, improves my body confidence going forward especially during a time where I'm going to be getting bigger and then postpartum as well I'm hoping that's something I can hold on to because right now I just feel in awe of my body and I love seeing it change and I love embracing and having a tiny little bump it's not really like a big bump yet and I can't wait to get a big bump there's something there um 
but I'm so excited to have a big bump. When I was younger, I used to look at pregnant women and just feel so envious, and now it's finally me. <laughs> and I used to watch as well that advert, you know, the Maltesers one. If you're in the UK, you might remember it. There was a Maltesers one, and there was a pregnant woman, and she used to roll the Maltesers off her belly into her mouth. <laughs> and I always said to Paul, I really want to try that. So yes, that has been my experience with scans, my first trimester, um, finding out it has all just been the most amazing experience everything I expected it to be and more like it has not let me down at all it's been so surreal so emotion filled and just incredible so 2023 for me and Paul is going to be a very very special one so um, I just wanted to touch on my plans with this channel as well. So I have really, really been enjoying YouTube again. I love editing videos and when I'm in my flow with it, where I'm uploading, it just gives me life. Like I really, really enjoy it. I love the creativity. So I definitely want to continue with uploading once a week as much as I can. I have always been um, of the mind about um, child privacy especially online so I'm very conscious that that is something um, that I do want to follow put what I um, preach into practice <laughs> so I know I think it's going to be quite difficult actually because I think when the baby's here I'm just going to be so amazed and want to show it to everyone about this amazing thing that me and Paul have done but I think I'm going to have to try and have a little bit of self-restraint because I don't know personally myself if I would want a lot of myself put out on the internet when I was younger and also for safety reasons as well. You hear all sorts of stories and I know it's a horrible topic so we don't like to talk about it but there are people um, on the internet that are on it for the wrong reasons and are looking for pictures of children which in our heads are completely innocent, normal and they will turn it into something else. There was a story about... Um, a mum that was uploading very innocent pictures of her toddler onto Facebook with people that she thought she knew and it ended up on this horrible website and things like that have always stuck in my mind. So I think as horrible as it is to say, I think as a parent these days, you have to put yourself in the mind of someone who thinks in that disgusting way um, to try and protect them, to see what could be taken, what could be used out of context. And that's something I'm personally going to be very, very um, on the ball with, with or I'm going to try to be. So that is something I really hope people will respect. And it's sad because there's so many people on this channel that I recognise so many people's names that comment and I feel like we've got a really lovely community. Um, so I do, I, I wish I could share pictures with those people. I think what I'm going to do, which I've seen other people do on YouTube, is on my Instagram, create a close friends list and then just share pictures with those that I really do trust and have spoken to. Um, so that's going to be my plan I'm still going to be doing once they're here obviously the first probably couple of months I don't know what I'll be doing I'll probably take a little break from YouTube because I'm not going to be putting that pressure on myself but once I get back in the routine they might just be in the background while I'm doing a cleaning video but I'm just going to do my best to not show them too much not make them the focus of anything but I would like to do some um, motherhood content just in a way that feels comfortable for me so I as you all know, I'm obsessed with pregnancy, motherhood, and I'm actually very sad. So for the past couple of years, I've had a Google Doc, and every time I've heard a tip, I have wrote it up in this Google Doc. So I've got an absolute plethora of information. <laughs> but I think once my baby is here, you kind of just have to like feel it out, feel what their personality is like and go off that. So I'm excited to share um, information tips things that work for me maybe like newborn videos maybe packing for hospital videos um nursery tour things like that just the stuff I feel comfortable sharing so yes that's what I'm hoping to do with this channel but I hope you are um happy to hear this news um I know this type of news can be difficult for some people as well so if it has been a difficult video for you then I'm sending you a big big hug as well because this type of thing is very emotional for good reasons for some people but also um it can hit a nerve as well with other people but anyway I hope you are happy for me I'm absolutely over the moon it's the best thing ever to have ever happened to me and I'm just so excited to start this new journey in my life I feel like everything has been waiting to this moment so we're finally here 
feel a bit emotional but I'm gonna hold it back <laughs> we're finally here and yes I'm just so excited for everything to come dream come true and I will see you in my next video